Welcome on the show. It's a Thursday morning. It's Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. I've got something different for you this morning. Now, a few years ago, 2018 precisely, a young lady, her name is Shewun Adigun. She actually um, where um, she put things together and formed a bobsled team. Now, the bobsled itself, the event, it's a sporting event. It's a winter event. It's actually done in the winter. And then um, she put her friends together, went for the Olympics. Well, they came, okay, this is it. Now, Shane Wadigun and her friend Ngozi Oumere, they were together to actually form the bobsled team. Remember the film, Smooth Running? They actually came together, the Jamaican squad, they came together and they actually came second and everybody was um, proud of them. So when these ladies came together and said, listen, we'll do this for Nigeria, for Africa, the first ever, they formed the GoFundMe arrangement and it made $75,000 at the end of the day. And um, sports people like um, Serena Williams queued in. And now we have a major boss there. Now we have Yusuf Hamed. He's actually training right now for the Olympics in Pyongyang, North Korea. I've got him on the line right now on Zoom. And we'll talk to him about why Bob's led. Well, let's talk to why Bob's led. Hamed Yusuf, good morning. Uh, good morning. <coughs> Thank you for joining us all the way from Pyongyang, in North Korea. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Now, the first me. question Nigerians wanted to ask you is why bobsled? Um, first and foremost, uh, I needed, I wanted to change a, a view of uh, my sporting perspective, which uh, at the end of the line, it came along, this came along the bobsled and tryouts, which were, came up around 2019 while I was in my coaching school in Lagos. So uh, I heard about the screening and they told me to, uh, to come and do my trials. So fortunately, I was among the few selected athletes that made up with the cutoff. So along the line, Dr. The Dr. Chung introduced us deeply into the sport and she made us realize uh, how impactful our performance is, is going to be. And more so to enable other sporting men and women who will be interested in the sport to uh, to come along. So we being the first uh, member of the homemade bobsled team, so it's, uh, I feel it's something which I have to try, being a, which, uh, a sport that is different from track and field. How so long I actually wanted to try something new. Okay, how long have you been training for and when did you get to Pyongyang? Uh, we got to Pyongyang around Pyongyang around uh, three weeks ago. This is the fourth week, but on our on our arrival on our arrival to South Korea, we went for two weeks uh, quarantine. So after the two weeks quarantine, so we had one week to train to prepare for this sport for this competition. So <clears throat> here we are. So we only had to do one week training here in the ice. Then before you can actually compete. Now, before let me, let me ask you a, a personal question. Now, this question is personal. Don't laugh, please. If you don't okay. laugh, oh. before you started right. doing, <laughs> bob, before you started doing bobsled, had you ever been in snow before? Yes. Had you ever been on ice before? Never. It's only <laughs> in film and in my imagination. So how are you coping? You've never, you've never seen snow in your life before, never seen ice, and you intend to compete at the Olympics on ice, bobsled. Uh, it's something which you just have to, <clears throat> if you have this determination and the spirit of a sportman, then you would know, uh, being a sportman, you have to face any challenge which you encounter. How has Shewa Degu, doctor, been able to um, encourage you guys to do well in future, at the Olympics precisely? Oh, over the course of our <coughs> meeting, she uh, she organized a Zoom meeting every day, which she introduced the sport from her own experience. She tried to break down the sport in detail to us as fast as we can possibly understand, in our own understanding. So it actually gave us the imagination. But compared to being here physically, it's, uh, it made us want to do more. And also, it's never really occurred to us like we've never been in snow because she made us realize what we're going to expect 
and what how to actually take care of ourselves if we eventually get into this. Now, um, I know this might not concern you. You might not know. But how far do you think our government has done in supporting you guys? Honestly, I don't know. I don't actually know. I don't have anything to say about that. I don't know. Okay, the last time Shewu and the rest of the crew were at the Olympics, they came 19th. What are your chances, your, your crew's chances now? Uh, our chances are just like uh, the main focus now is just to utilize the little chance we have as, as long as we have a little opportunity. So I'm not actually looking at the... Uh, the, I'm optimistic that the we can actually do our best and make the qualifying times. Now, Yusuf, um, most people will say you are a guy. Why are you not involved in basketball? Why not football? Why not other sports that most men in Nigeria would want? Why is sport that Nigerians don't, aren't even used to yet? <laughs> um, I never thought about that until now. I believe it's just what I have interest in because when the sport was introduced, I find it interesting, scary, at the same time fun. So I try to face my fears and then ah, let me try this sport and see how it actually is going, how the experience is going to look like riding on the snow, like riding a modern roller coaster on snow. So I'm also, I've never seen snow before. I said, okay. Uh, let me actually put this to test and uh, see how the snow sport looks like. Have you ever seen the film Smooth Running before? Yeah, yeah, I saw, I saw, I saw it immediately after I was elected. Do you feel like them, a hero? Um. I, before I can perceive myself to be uh, to be in such a stage, I would actually have to have qualified for the Olympics. Then actually, then I can actually feel myself being in their position. So right now, I I still believe I've not done more. So uh, um, Yusuf, um, when do the qualifications begin for the bobsled teams? Ah, uh, this competition, uh, this uh, competition. Yes, the qualifications, yes. Qualifications. Yeah, qualification. This is one of the, uh, this uh, competition we just, uh, there is also part of the qualification. Uh, so subsequently, when the season resumes uh, in, the near, in, the, in October, then definitely then the qualification will also start ahead. And then hopefully you're going to be uh, able to attend more competitions to ensure we secure our uh, participation in the Olympics. Now, Yusuf, when you come back to Lagos, are we expecting you with a medal? If yes, which medal do you think you guys can win? In the Olympics? Yeah, at the Olympics, yes. Ah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is not as I think yet. We have to be in the Olympics first. Yeah. Then get more frequent on highs, then familiarize ourselves uh, into the environment and how to sled faster. Because right now we are not fast. We are just uh, still on the safe line. I will call it a safe line because we should not overstep our boundaries because we are new to we are new to the sport and we are also new on sliding on high. So we shouldn't just try to run faster than we can walk first. How many so of you right are now you... still crawling? Then after crawling, how many of you are in your team? Uh, for the bobsled, we are six all together. One male bobsled, uh, one female bobsled, and one skeleton and for male and one skeleton for female. So six all together. So why come I have only you this morning? Where are the rest? And the rest are inside. Preparing their luggage for our leaving here, South Korea tomorrow. Why did you pick South Korea for your training for your training experience? Why so? Why not somewhere else? 
Uh, because uh, this, uh, there are the, they are hosting the available competitions, which we need to get ourselves acquainted with the game and also make qualification and uh, sustain our, our, obtain our points. So that's why I believe the director chose the federation chose to send us to South Korea. Now, now um, from North Korea, Pyongyang, where next? From South Korea, where next? Uh, the season starts in October, so when before the season starts, will, uh, they will get back to us and to, uh, as to where we're going to be heading to. So from South Korea, you're coming to Nigeria back until you get in, you are, you, 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 they get in touch with you guys? Yes, the reason being that uh, the competition is over, so we have to, everybody is leaving the uh, competition environment to go back to their country to prepare for the opening of the season, which will be coming up in October, by October. So when should we uh, expect... Because um, the Olympic is coming, is coming by next year, 2022. So when should we expect you guys in Lagos so we can meet you guys at the airport, at least welcome you guys at the airport? When? What day are you coming to Lagos? Uh, by, by tomorrow, our flight is scheduled to take off by 12 noon. 12 a.m. 12 a.m. So uh, approximately 22 hours from then or 23 hours from then we should be in Lagos, Nigeria. Okay, I promise you, Yusuf, we'll try our best to bust you guys at the airport and give you a befitting welcome. You are our boss the team. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Yusuf. Thank you. Now, um, you can understand that um, we have different sports at the Olympics and we're, we're, we're tired of talking about the, the regular suspects, you know, football, the athletics, the long jump and all that, bobsled. These guys have made us proud, love it or leave it. These guys who are going to represent us in, in, in Nigeria here have never been on ice. They have never been seen snow in their entire life. But they are going there. Like the film, Cool Running, 1993, Jamaicans came together, went there and came second. And that film will make you cry if you watch it. And of course, that reminds the Americans of that. So you see people like um, Serena Williams, um, um, other athletes in America trying to get a fund me account for these people. And so far, so good, they made about $75,000 and they are still making more. The bobsled team leaves South Korea, Pyongyang, 12 a.m., 12 noon tomorrow. We calculate 22 hours. We will try and Link them up at the airport when they arrive. Try and interview them one-on-one -on -one and bring you that on the show. That's a promise. So now we've had them on Zoom. We'll try and lock them down at the airport when they get here from South Korea. Try and talk to them too, okay? That was Hamid Yusuf. All the way from Pyongyang, but we'll be in Lagos in 622 hours, okay? Now, here is today's 2021 African Cup of Nations qualifier against Ben Republic. Super Eagles players have accepted the decision of the NFF to convey the team by boat to Porto Novo for as long as it is safe. Recall that some weeks ago, the NFF president, Amadio Penek, announced the move to travel by boat instead of traveling by chartered flight, a decision which was also accepted by the Super Eagles coach, Gennot Rohr. Although there were mixed reactions to the traveling method from fans and football pundits in Nigeria, however, some key members of the Super Eagles, such as Leon Balogun, Joe Waribo, Henry Oyekuru and Williams Trust Ekong have accepted the decision. Now, we heard this when Amadou Pinik, first of all, said it and said they might be going by boat. Truly, truly, yeah, the, the roads are bad and um, the hold up, the traffic on the way is supposed to be a one hour, 45 minutes journey, all things being equal. But with our roads, it will end up being four, five hours. They could get there tired and have a crucial match. But by boat, we hear, it will take them about 31, 32 minutes, and they'll be there, less than 30 minutes, as I heard, and then they'll get there, get refreshed, get themselves checked for COVID, and rest, and then get ready for the match. A must-beat match. So, of course, um, I guess the boys are cool with it. You see, they can go by boats if they will get there early enough and safe enough. So I think we're all good to go. Okay, we wish them good luck. Uh, of course, uh, the, the lads will be traveling today. We don't know what time today, but they're going by boat. From which jet seat, we don't know yet. We'll find out, though. Now, Man United forward Marcus Rashford and Arsenal midfielder Bukayo Saka are doubtful 
for England's three World Cup qualifiers. Now, manager Gareth Southgate said on Wednesday, I had a Thursday's opener against San Marino at the Wembley. Rashford missed United's FA Cup defeat at Leicester City on Sunday, March 21st, due to a foot injury and has yet to train with England, while Sakai is still having his hamstring injury treated by his club. England faced Albania in Tirana on Sunday, March 28th, and host Poland at Wembley in Group I on Wednesday, March 31st. Injuries mean Southgate is without a number of players, including Liverpool's Jordan Henderson, Aston Villa's Jack Grealish, and Borussia Dortmund's Jordan Sancho. Southgate said he was particularly conscious of the need to spread the load during the three games. Southgate suggested that captain Harry Kane will be one of the players whose time will be rationed, laughing off the idea that a sports striker would have a say in the matter. Well, they're both doubtful. Um, I'd say Marcus more doubtful than Bukayo at the moment. Um, uh, but we, we're going to uh, assess them. Um, you know, Marcus has been very keen to be with us. Um, uh, you know, he obviously wasn't with us so much in the autumn, so I think he's been keen to be part of the group and, and get with us. Bukayo has needed to have some... Um, sort of investigations at the club first so hasn't been able to join us yet but we're hopefully will be by the you know in the next couple of days well if I allowed Harry to make that decision he'd play every minute so that won't be happening <laughs> but look it's brilliant we've got a captain who wants to play every minute of every game and um, we've got to be mindful that he had extra time last Thursday then another uh, high intensity game on Sunday so uh, but we've got that situation with a lot of the players really we've got to make sure we manage the fixtures correctly manage we've done that through training this week as well well they're both doubtful um i'd say marcus more doubtful than welcome back now gareth southgate has called his tenure as england manager a sublime so the ridiculous and admits he had, had to work very hard to overshadow a disappointing European Championship campaign. The 50-year-old takes charge of his 50th game as manager on Thursday, that's today, against the lowest-ranked side in the competition, San Marino, and is aware he will be without key forwards Marcus Rashford and Bukayo Saka. Now, Southgate believes online abuse will be difficult to police. However, taking away an athlete's social media could be detrimental to the fan base, especially during lockdown? Of course, at the very beginning, there was a huge lack of confidence in everything, really. You know, um, disappointing European Championship, two very quick changes of manager. Um, and, you know, we had to try to work through all of that, st stabilize the ship, qualify for a World Cup in that process, and then start to change the way that we wanted to play. and blood some of the young players that we knew were coming through the system so there's been a lot of different phases of that and of course the last year, 12 months has been a remarkable situation for everybody frankly so to have had a, a, the experience of managing through that period has been you know from the sublime to the ridiculous really I, I think we've said in the past and and the FA and other football authorities have said we need stricter stricter legislation um, around the control of those sites um, and I know that's also a complex issue because of people in countries where um, to be uh, to not have the freedom of speech is a is a dangerous restriction so it's a, it's not an easy thing to police because you know this abuse might not necessarily just be coming from people living in England it, it can be worldwide I guess Southgate has a large amount of problems moving over his head. All the dark-skinned players in the team have been racially abused on social media. Most dark-skinned players in other, other, other teams too and clubs have been racially abused. But Southgate says it's going to be hard to police the social media against these guys that are abusing these people. How can you hate me because of the color of my skin? And then go on social media and insult me, my person and my skin. I don't know. Belgium head coach Roberto Martinez was most pleased with his side's personality in their 3-1 comeback win over Wales in World Cup qualifying yesterday. There was no repeat of Wales' upset win at Euro 2016, despite a Welsh securing a first-half lead in Leuven. Martinez believes the team will have to learn to adapt to international football at home with no fans, 
as they travel to Praha next where some Czech Republic supporters will be in attendance for their next qualifiers. We knew that it was going to be a tough game. That's nothing different. But I think it became even harder than what we expected in the moment that we considered the first goal. I thought Wales adapted to the game better than us. And it was made for the perfect away team performance. Um, the conditions, the lack of fans. And in the first action that Wales had, they showed a, a great move where they, it shows the quality that they have in, 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 the, in the individuals. And then the performance was, we had two choices. One, accepting it. And then you, you allow that the performance goes away from you and becomes an away game. Or you showed personality and bravery and, and, and that's what the team did. They, they never accepted that the game would go away from us. We scored two very good goals from open play in the first half and then the second half. Even though we didn't create too many opportunities every time we were in front of goal, it looked like an opportunity to ch or a chance to score. So, so we're very, very pleased, not by, by the style of the performance, by the incredible personality that the players showed today. <laughs> Roberto Martinez, one of the coaches of one of the most improved teams in the world, Belgium. They've got everyone that matters, Romelu Lukaku, Togen and Edin Hazard, Kevin De Bruyne. They've got everybody that matters and that team is totally improved. Um, lucky guy if you call him, okay. Now, French captain Hugo Lloris was left frustrated as Le Bleu were held to a one-all draw by Ukraine in a World Cup qualifier yesterday. Despite having no shots on target in the match, and the Shevchenko side left the Stade de France with a point, following an over own goal by a person, Kim Pepe. Lloris believes the visitors had maximum luck in Paris, while Didier Deschamps admits Kylian Mbappe didn't have the best off night for the 2018 World Cup winners. Now, I have a problem with that match. I am a Manchester United fan, big time. But I have never trusted Martial in front of goal. I never have, I never will. You bring out Mbappe in a match and bring in Martial. Score frying pants to fire. Fernando Santos is eyeing improvement from his Portugal players following their 1-0 win over Azerbaijan on Wednesday. The current European champions kicked off their World Cup qualifying campaign with a narrow win in Turin. Santos hopes facing a stronger opponent in Serbia on Saturday will see the best form his players has as they look to raise their game. Some sad news, really sad news. Now, FIFA has banned its former president, Sepp Blatter, until 2028 on Wednesday after handing him a new suspension of six years and eight months for receiving huge bonuses. Former FIFA Secretary General Jerome Falke also had his existing suspension extended by the same amount. The new bans will only come into force when the current bans on Blatter and Volke for corruption, which lasts till October this year and October 2025, ends. FIFA's ethics committee said it had also fined each man $1.1 million. Blatter is 85, received 23 million Swiss francs in extraordinary bonuses linked to the 2010 World Cup in South Africa and the 2014 World Cup in Brazil. As well as Confederations Cup tournaments in Brazil that preceded it, the ethics committee said in a summary of its decision, Volke, who is a 60-year-old Frenchman, who was Blatter's right-hand man during his 17-year reign at the head of football's world governing body, received 30 million Swiss francs in bonuses over the same period, the committee said. Now, the former sports journalist was initially banned for 12 years, but it was reduced to 10 years on appeal. He is now banned until 2032. Malone broke down in tears as he paid tribute to the 10 victims of Colorado's latest mass shooting and dedicated Tuesday's March 23rd game against Orlando Magic to the families dealing with the aftermath. Police on Tuesday publicly identified the suspect, Ahmad Al Aliwi Alisa, who stormed the King Super's outlets in Boulder, armed with an AR style semi automatic rifle, a handgun, and wearing a tactical vest, and opened fire, killing 10 people and including a policeman. Malone proceeded to read the names of the victims who were teared up. When he arrived at the name of Eric Tully, an 11-year-old veteran of the Boulder Police Force, who was the father of seven children. Okay, I wish I could have heard Malone speak, but you can't do that anymore. There's little time that we have on the show today. Thank you very much, Hamed Yusuf, all the way from Pyongyang, South Korea. He's a member of the, our bobsled team going to the Olympics. Well, they just finished qualifiers. Let's hope they pass and they can go. And of course, I'm just same time tomorrow for another edition of um, Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. My name is Wally Scott. Like I always advise you at the end of every show, if not for anything, at least for your heart, do some sports.